most of your energy, your addiction within air is just going to be your filters. It's basically all you as a coordinator do. And you guys are going to understand it better than anybody because I guarantee all of our coordinators out there have done some version of filtering in any kind of software. So you understand it a little bit better than, um, and you're going to blow your program director's mind. If you click on the filters tab in the applications, you'll see that it's, it's divided up into three sections. So at the very bottom, I know I'm starting at the bottom, right? At the very bottom are the ARIS defined filters. And these are filters that they've kind of created. Then there's the user defined filters. Those are your filters. I can create them for my program. It's program defined. I can create like one for my program and then anybody who has access to that program can utilize my filters. Um, that's good to know if you're doing something with your program director. Um, and then, then you can, on any of these filters in either one of these two categories, there's a little star next to it. If you click the star, it'll automatically make it a favorite. And then I'll show up in the top section. It'll also show up on the home screen under favorites. The only thing place it doesn't show that seems to be is the most important place to show is where you run the filter to begin with, which I, you will see in a second. So in program filters, there's, um, there's three things to keep in mind. You can create a temporary filter. So you're like, I'm just gonna like, I wanna apply this filter. I'm not sure if it's the filter that I want or is appropriate or is gonna give me the information that I need. So I don't wanna save it. I just wanna like run it and see how it looks. And so that's the temporary filter. So that's like you, what I'm gonna show you how to do here in a second. And then you run it. Maybe you decide like you run it and you're like, oh, this is great. I'm gonna use this for so many other things in the future. I wanna save it. And at that point you can, you can afterwards save the filter. So it's not like you have to rerun it. Then of course you have your saved ones, which show up in the program defined section and then your favorites that we just talked about. So for me to show you all the screenshots of running a filter, um, we'll just show too much confidential data. So I put script, like as much script information here as possible and I show part of the screens. So when you go, you go to your application list tab um, and you, you have your big long roster there or whatever. And like I told you, there's that, that window at the very top that says modify filter criteria and you click the little down thing and you get this little expansion thing. It says, um, yeah, view current results, modify filter criteria. Then it's gonna, it's gonna have a thing that says add group. It's like a little green button. You're gonna click add group. And then you're gonna say add new criteria because within that group, you can add several criteria. Then from there, you have this one. So you select the category. And this is why I said that it's important for you to understand what fields exist in ARIS and what they kind of turn out. So it's taking some time, especially if you've never done this before, I'm um, taking some time to just like click through the tabs and understand what is where will help you with your filters a little bit. You don't have to memorize it, um, but yeah, it's good to know where it's at so you, so it can find it because it does these categories and then the fields. So, so for me down here, what I did was I ran a category of medical education. The field is medical school. I want to know who came from what medical schools and then um, condition. So condition is your typical filter language that's going to be on any database software, including Excel, that you run a filter and it will say like equals, greater than, less than, doesn't equal, everything but, whatever. Um, you don't have to remember these, they're in the drop down. And then of course it'll give you what you want to pick. Once I do this and I have everything, ignore this blue box for a second, I'm going to explain that in a second. You don't have to click that, but I'm going to tell you what it does. And then you're like, okay, that's the filter I want to run. I'm going to click save criteria. And then it's going to save it. And then I have to click apply after that. And then it will filter out the list based on what I asked it. Um, now I'm going to go back to this. So if you have something that has a lot of options to it, so medical schools, there's like millions of them. So I can press control F on my keyboard and it's because it's within a web page, so I can like, it's that kind of like find feature. And, um, and so I can type like University of Wisconsin 
and it will jump me down to University of Wisconsin. I can keep it more minimal and say I want to see the schools in Wisconsin. I can just type Wisconsin and it's going to yellow highlight all this everything that has Wisconsin in its name. And I can and then I'll click to say that that's, those are the options I want and say I want also University of Tennessee. So then I can do another search because I've already clicked Wisconsin, do another search to find Tennessee and then I may have to click it to, for it to show up in your what you're going to churn out here. Okay. Then, like I said, you save criteria and apply. Now, I told you I was going to explain this little, this little unassuming button is so magical. So, so say you are creating a filter here that you're going to use a lot in the future, but the criteria down here, the specific criteria may vary. So in this case, I could, if, so I, what I can do is I can set it up because I'm going to save it and I'm going to click ask user for value. And then I'll do my whole saving thing. So the next time I go to run that filter, it's going to pop up a box and say, okay, what value do you want? And you can pick it and then it'll, it'll run it based on what you picked. Really cool and nice. And you feel like you just did a little computer programming, even though you really didn't, but you, but you feel like, you feel like pretty cool. <laughs> So the, um, the most common reason for this is I'll do it for interview date. So as you know, like we'll all run our filters on that, the interview date that's coming up because you got to do all your coordinator work with it. And you just, you just want to limit the results to the 10 people that are coming that day or whatever. So then it comes up, I'm going to click the thing and I'm going to say, I only want to run the people that are coming on October 30th. And then I'll click and just run it. But I have it saved for every day before interview days, I can run a filter that's already saved on that. So it's kind of nice. Saves you a few minutes and makes you feel fancy. Um, now, if you remove, so now you've applied your filter. Now, like, it's the next, like, now you got to look up something else totally different. Um, so in order to clear this filter, you'll click the you'll look at this filter thing again, this modified filter criteria, and then you X, there's a red X next to the filter that you applied, and you um, you click on that, um, and it will, it will remove the filter. A little note, don't forget that when you do that to click apply, or else the filter is still applied. And so the that means that what you limited the list to is still limited. So if you're gonna run a second filter, then you can't, um, you can't just, uh, you can't do that. So like, say you limit it to like everybody in Massachusetts, but now, um, but now you wanna know the people that are coming from New York. So obviously if you apply that to Massachusetts list, it's all, it's gonna come up with zero results and you're gonna confuse the heck out of the system. And it's gonna say, what are you asking me? <laughs> it's not gonna say that literally, but it's just gonna come up with no results and you're gonna get frustrated. So just kind of keep that in mind. You have to click apply. Yeah, the most re common reason it happens is if you're looking for one criteria filter, then you exit out and then you're looking for a second criteria filter. So you just really have to hit apply between each time you do that. The other thing is that, um, and I forgot to say on the create, is you can add more than one filter on a search. So you could add more than one group. So you'll see like you added a group and let's say um, you wanted everybody that is, um, it went to the medical school, went to medical schools in Massachusetts. So you apply that filter, whatever, and then you can add a second group. And the first thing it's going to do is ask you and or or, and you have to click the little radio button. And if you say, like, say, I'm going to say, everybody that came that graduated from Massachusetts medical schools is my first search. And then my second search is anybody who has a permanent address with Massachusetts in it. So I'm really, I'm trying to find the people that are around us basically. So, um, so yeah. So if I say went to Massachusetts medical school and have a permanent address in Massachusetts, that that's probably only going to find people that are currently still in Massachusetts that graduated from Massachusetts medical school. Um, if I say, or it's going to help find those people that are maybe like they're doing research fellowships in Massachusetts, but they didn't go to Massachusetts medical school. So I'll get like both groups of people. 
that's really, it's really common for USMLEs when you're doing USMLEs to keep in mind. Because if you say, like your program director will say, well, let's rule out everybody with a score of 220 and below. And, um, and so you're like, you're like, okay, that seems easy enough. That is oddly easy. And it is not easy. <laughs> And you'll, because what happens is you have your step one that has a score and you have your step two CS, I think, or CK, I, I, I'll never remember, that has a score. So if you put in 220, it could rule out either one. And you're like, oh, I thought this was so much easier than I thought. And he's making it so much easier, but it's not. So what you can do is you can do this, this group thing and you can say like step one, 220, or step two, two, twenty. All right. So tips to remember when you're doing filters is keep in mind filtering schema. Um, if you apply too many um, filters, it could limit your results in a way that you don't want it to, like I just explained. Um, if you remove a filter, don't forget to hit apply. I already said that, but it's really important to remember. Um, once a filter is applied, it affects everything else in the software that you're looking up. So if you're trying to run an export, the export is going to run on what you have filtered. And the pro tip that I already discussed was Control-F. Make you so happy, Control-F.